Hey Canucks fans, Jim Rutherford, our new president of hockey operations, met with the media this morning. Let's break it all down. I'm Canuck Clay. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, December the 13th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. And as always, this vlog is brought to you by Perform Transform, personal training and weight loss. Sign up now for a free seven-day trial. Use the link in my video description. And by Van City Experts Real Estate Group. Contact Jason Lim and his team for all of your real estate needs. Had a big night yesterday, was at the game, did a post-game live stream, made a bunch of big announcements on the stream, including a new tier. Thanks to Lucas for already signing up for the new legend tier. And also announced that Marie and I will be going live on Cameo tomorrow to raise money for Connects for Kids Fund. But I'll get into all that as we go throughout the week. Right now, I want to talk about, oh, and before any of this, I want to remind you that it's Parker and me tonight at 10 p.m. for Canucks After Dark. We have a lot to talk about, including four straight Canucks wins. Jim Rutherford met the media earlier today, spoke for over half an hour with Francesco Accolini at his side, and he did quite well, was very direct, was very forthcoming, answered what he could answer, deferred when he needed to defer. He's only been in town for the past 24 hours, so I'm sure it's been a whirlwind for him. Made some jokes about why he took the job is because he likes stress, and he knew that there was gonna be a lot of stress in Vancouver, so that was kind of a funny line. But here's my biggest takeaway from Jim Rutherford, aside from him being direct, honest, forthcoming, all those things. He, he's a confident guy. He's confident in what he's done. He's confident in what he's able to do. It sounds like he's not gonna rush into anything. It sounds like that he's gonna focus on building his hockey operations department first. A hockey operations department that, well, mainly he needs a GM, he needs an assistant GM or two, and then we, we also with Chris Gear and Jonathan Wall leaving as well, there, there, he needs to build a team. He needs to build a team. So I think, I got the sense he's gonna wor worry about his hockey operations team before he starts to make any big trades with respect to Canucks players. And he even said that. He said he's in no hurry to make a trade. He said that. He's in no hurry to make a trade as opposed to on the GM search, he said he has a list of 40 potential general manager candidates, 40. He's categorized them and he's gonna to start to work through those categories. And he also said that he's, he might hire an assistant GM as early as this week. So you can see right there that he's making the hockey operations department more of a priority than um, not more of a priority. He, well, from a time perspective, of course, the team on the ice is a priority too. But I think of immediate interest is he's going to work on the hockey, oper hockey operations department. Now, when it comes to the team itself, yes, he said he's in, in no hurry to make trades. He did say that as soon as he was named president of hockey ops, that he started to get calls from other general managers uh, throughout the league asking about Canucks players. And that would seem to make sense, giving Rutherford's kind of reputation as a wheeler and dealer. But uh, it was nice to hear him say that he's not going to rush into anything. And that was kind of what I was thinking. Was was this four-game win streak from this week, is that going to kind of taint or, or color his views or his opinion or his plan on what he wants to do? But no, it sounds like he, he even admitted he's going to take December and January to really assess where this team is at. Now, when it came to the actual team, said a couple of interesting things. The very first player he named was Thatcher Demko. He says, when you need to want to build a contender, Thatcher Demko, uh, you need an elite goaltender, and we have that in Thatcher Demko, who was also named NHL First Star of the Week today. So Bruce Boudreau was correct in predicting that last night in his, in his post-game press conference. So Jim Rutherford named Thatcher Demko as an elite goaltender, and we have Demko locked up for five seasons at $5 million a year. He then was asked specifically, specifically about Hughes and Petey. And for Hughes, he says, there are many different ways that you can play defense. And the best way is to go get the puck first and get it out of the zone. That's the best way to play defense as opposed to being big or rough or stapling guys in the boards. And he, therefore, he thinks that we have a really good player in Quinn Hughes. And for Pedersen, he said he's too good to, to be playing like he struggled in the, in the first 20 games and that he's very confident that Petey will turn his game around and he mentioned, and we've seen, that PD has de certainly done that, at least starting to do that the past week or so, along with this winning streak. So those are the three players he specifically talked about, were Demko, unsolicited, and then Hughes and PD when he was asked about them. A couple of other interesting things that Rutherford said, 
he, without throwing Jim Benning under the bus, he said that the team's in a very tricky salary cap situation. He talked about dollar in for dollar out and the challenges, it, it, the, how challenging it is to to work with a team that is basically at the cap. So he warned us that we shouldn't expect, uh, kind of when you're so tight against the cap, you're always looking for to find margins and to find little places of um, advantage. But it's not like we're going to be able to trade. In essence, you're trading, once you get to trading players, you're going to be trading players for likely equal cap or lesser cap, of course. So it might not feel like we're improving right away when we make the trades. Th- those are my words, not his. But I, I think you know what I'm saying is because we're up against the cap, we it's not like we can make this blockbuster trade and bring in a lot more cap in. We simply can't. He did talk about how he doesn't want to trade away high draft picks. And this is something I've been talking about for the past little bit, given that two years ago, we didn't pick until the third round. Last year, we didn't pick until the second round. You don't want to give away those high draft picks. He said he's willing to trade um, you know, lower draft picks, and that would make sense. And he also said that he, when it comes to trades, especially when it comes to players, he wants to be on the good side of the age, meaning you're always trying to trade for younger players. You're trying to move age out and move younger age in. Then he talked uh, quickly about some some other issues, diversity in the workplace and uh, and his history in Pittsburgh and Carolina. But overall, I think when it comes to hockey, I, I'd say the four or five main points he brought up were that he's going to focus on his his hockey operations group first. He's not in a rush to make trades, even though he's been fielding calls. He loves Demko. He's um, he's high on on Hughes and PD, and he doesn't want to trade and win. Uh, trade away any high picks. So I think those are some four or five takeaways that I took from the press conference. I would love to know your reaction to what I had to say, or better yet, if you watch the press conference as well, what your reaction is to what Jim Rutherford had to say in his first meeting with the Vancouver media. And I told a quick story last night of, I think he was supposed to be on the screen last night. So in the arena, they said, welcome to Jim Rutherford. And they had a graphic up, but then they didn't cut away to him, a live shot. So I think maybe he was in the washroom or busy or the the cameraman couldn't find him. So that was kind of a funny moment last night. But we do know that he's been in town for 24 hours. And oh, one other tidbit. uh, He said that Francesco Accolini actually flew out to his place to to meet with him. So wherever he was living, that was kind of a cool story. And that just showed how much Accolini wanted Rutherford. So Canucks fans, let me know in the comments below your reaction to what I had to say, what Rutherford had to say, if you heard it directly, and or um, how you're feeling about Rutherford as our president of hockey operations. Shout out to my legend member, Lucas Gates. Shout out to my hero members, Nux Fan Number 29, Justin Credible, and Andrew Chang. Gotta get used to this. Shout out to my Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Anna Broomfield, Shannon Hollingworth, Carol Bovlander, and HSM Fangirl Gaming. And as well to my franchise and all-star members. Thanks to all members of all levels. You are listed in my video descriptions. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, we're growing, as you can tell. Press the join button underneath this or in my videos or in the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Become a member of this channel or upgrade if you'd like to. And leave a comment down below if you'd like to about Jim Rutherford. Join me tonight with Parker, 10 p.m. for Canucks After Dark. Aside from that, of course, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Have a great day. God bless, and go Canucks, go.